and we go to the book of Psalms. Go right to the middle of your Bible, the book of Psalms. We're going to Psalm 119. We're going to lift up two, we're going to lift up three verses on today. This is the longest chapter uh, in the Bible, actually. Psalm 119 is the longest chapter in the Bible. It's a beautiful piece of Hebrew poetry that follows all the letters of the Hebrew alphabet. But we're going to look at that B part today. We're going to look at part B all today. So going to verse 9, Psalm 119, verses 9 through 11, and it reads, How can a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed according to your words. He's speaking to God right now. With my whole heart, I have sought you. Oh, let me not wander from your commandments. Your word I have hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. Your word I have hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. And today we want to lift up this thought and by the help of the Holy Spirit, we want to come with the title of this text, Hide and Seek. Hide and Seek. Amen. Listen, I recently uh, acquired some new books uh, for my library. Thank you, Dad. Uh, one of the greatest gifts that he ever gave me in addition to being my father was he gave me the knowledge and gave me uh, study materials. Uh, upon his passing. But I recently got some new uh, books that I brought home uh, from Arkansas. And since I got these new books, I recently got some new bookcases. Now, I found out the hard way that because of COVID-19 and more people working from home, that getting office supplies and getting office furniture is a lot more complicated than it used to be. Not only were some of the plants shut down, but just about everybody in town was out of Stop. So you had to order it and wait for it to come to you. So I ordered four new bookshelves. I ordered a desk too, and it's been a couple of months and it still hasn't made it. It's supposed to be here today. Pray for me. It's supposed to be here this week, so pray for me. But I needed four new bookcases. Four new bookcases. Now, bookshelves on their own are not that complicated to put together. I'm going to just give you a tip right now. If you've never built anything, if you've never been to Ikea, if you've never had to assemble anything on your own, bookcases are some of the easiest pieces of furniture to assemble on your own. But I wanted to make sure that I put them together correctly so I followed the instructions as they were given in the box. Now, I pulled everything out of the box. And then Carrington was right there with me, my little helper, to make sure that I had all the right tools for the job. She was right there on the spot, bless her heart. She helped me with all of my tools and, and the instructions. And the first time, the first bookcase took me about an hour to put it all together. Not bad time, it didn't take that long. It took about an hour to put it all together and kind of got the swing of things. So I started putting together bookcase number two. Now, I followed the directions. I made sure everything was in order. I made sure to go line by line. I didn't move forward until, until I followed step one to step two, step two to step three. I followed everything. So when I started on the second one, I consulted with the directions just to make sure I wasn't missing anything. But because I was familiar with the process of the construction from the first experience, it only took me about 45 minutes. I went from an hour to about 45 minutes. Stay with me right here. This is going to really bless you. Then the third time, the third bookcase, I barely had to look at the directions. I looked at it every now and then for guidance, but by that time, I had the right tools. I was good. That time, it took me about 30 minutes to put the third one together. But by the time I assembled the fourth bookcase, I was so familiar with the process and had it committed to memory, what tools to use, when to use them, what screws, what bolts, what with where, that I did not have to look at the instructions at all. It came so natural at that point that I could teach it back to anyone. I knew where every nut, every bolt, every screw, every shelf went. So I knew which side to work on. So I knew how the weight was going to be distributed, where I could work with it the easiest throughout the job. It was easy because of this process. First, I read the manual. The second, I made sure I had the right equipment. Third, I applied what I learned from my experiences. 
And the fourth thing, I committed it to memory. I'm going to bless you right here. That's the way that God wants us to operate and walk in our own lives. The Bible says in 2 Timothy 2 and 15, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. God wants you to read the manual. When you read the manual, you'll find that all of the pieces of your broken life can be put back together. Has anybody here ever felt like they were under construction? Seems like none of the pieces of your life seem to come together and fit together the right way. You might be under construction. You can't seem to understand why none of the pieces seem to fit. You can't seem to get your life going in the right direction. You're under construction. Your finances are always in disarray. You're under construction. Relationships never seem to quite work out. You're under construction. Your marriage is having more downs than it's having ups. You're under construction. Seems like you're always worried about something. You're under construction. You stay in a state of depression. You may be under construction. Seems like nothing ever goes your way. You may be under construction. Y'all help me here. Your frustration turns to anger. Anger turns to outburst. Your outburst turns to rage and you can't control it. You may be under construction. But God does not intend for us to stay under construction. Brothers and sisters, we have all been under construction in our lives. Truth be told, some of us are under construction right now, and some of us require and need a full renovation of our lives. Y'all are not going to help me here today. But if you never consult the manual, oh, y'all are not going to help me today. If you never consult the manual, you'll be dealing with the pieces and not the finished process. Oh, you'll be dealing with the pieces and not the finished process. Product. You'll be dealing with the pieces and not God's promises. Let me help you with this. God gives us the instruction manual, the Holy Bible, for life in his divinely inspired word. <coughs> but the problem is, is we may have the word, but we need to study his word. Think about it. You spend years in school, going from class to class, from grade to grade, taking test after test, and you can't move forward until you pass the test. In order to pass the test, you may have some homework to do, and you have to study to know what's going to be on the test. God has provided us with the study material. But you ought to at least be able to open the book. See, I was in school once, so I know how, how this works. See, some people study hard and, and do their homework and take their time to, to take it all in. But then there are a lot of people, y'all know who you are, who prefer to take shortcuts. Oh, I'm not going to guilt shame anybody in here today, but y'all know what I'm talking about. I've seen the cheat sheets. I've seen you asking your classmate for the answers, trying not to get caught by the teacher. I've seen you trying to make the best guess that you can. And some of y'all are so sophisticated now that you'll Google the test and Google all the answers and you'll try to use your phone when you think that nobody is, is seeing. But I have news for you today. And that is that God is the one teacher that you can't cheat on his test. Y'all not going to help me today. But he is a merciful teacher. Matter of fact, God is the only teacher that I know of that you can ask for the answer in the middle of your test. And he'll give you the answer, all you have to do is ask for it. That's a word for somebody in here on today. Verse 9, the psalmist says, How can a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed according to your word. Now, the point that this verse is making, take notes right here. The point that this verse is making is that you need to hide 
the word in your head. You need to hide the word in your head. The author of this psalm makes a personal rhetorical question and answers the question in the same verse. He asks the question, how can a young man make his way right? How can a person get right? How can a person walk in the right way that God wants? And the, the simple answer to that is taking heed according to your word. You shouldn't have to depend on the pastor to spoon feed you the word. You ought to at least open the Bible for yourself and read it for yourself. And it should not be something that you just do on a, on a Sunday morning. It ought to be something that you access as much as you possibly can because God gives us access to his word 24-7. I'm not saying that you have to memorize the whole thing, but you ought to at least have two or three Bible verses committed to your memory. I'll give you the shortest one in the Bible. Jesus wept. If you don't know anything else, just know that Jesus cried. You ought to go and find out why he cried, but you ought to have two or three, at least two or three verses committed to your memory. Hide the word in your head. If you want to know how to handle everything that life throws at you, then you need to hide the word in your head. You need to hide the word in your head because there will be a time when pastor won't be around. There'll be a time when your cell phone won't have a signal. There'll be a time when your prayer partner is not available and you'll have nothing and nobody else to rely on than what's in your head. You need to hide the word, bring the word, remember the word, memorize some word in your head. We need to hide the word because one of the greatest threats to the future church is not knowing what's in the manual. Oh, y'all not going to help me here. One of the greatest threats to the future church is not knowing what's in this book. We have to be careful not to look at this book like we're reading Shakespeare or some foreign language. We have to be careful not to develop a sound by spirituality. What's a sound by spirituality, Pastor? Let me tell you. We get bits and pieces here and there, but never receive the fullness of the word. We never receive the fullness. We just get bites here and there. We see little posts with verses here and there, but we never open the book to receive the fullness and the power of the word of God. When we don't receive the fullness, we allow space between the gospel truth and our own false sense of truth that we deliver to ourselves and it's that sentiment that sometimes makes the word seem and feel like it's a foreign language. You know what I'm talking about. You read one verse, open the book. No, nah, this is too complicated for me. Let me get to the, to the better part. I don't understand that. I'm just going to read it later. I'm going to pick and choose what's valuable to me in this word. But let me inform you. And let me help you with this. The Bible says that every chapter, every verse, every syllable, every letter is profitable for a man. That's what the word says. 2 Timothy 3 and 16 says all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable. That means it's good for you. For doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness. I'm trying to help somebody in here all today. The, all, all the word, every word of it is good for you. And that's why you should not only hide the word in your head, but you also need to hide the word in your heart. Look at verse 10. What does it say? With my whole heart. I have sought you. Oh, let me not wander from your commandments. What brings us back to the word and keeps us in the word is when we hide it in our hearts. What brings us back? The head processes the word, but the heart compels us to come back to it. Verse 10 reminds us that we have a tendency to wander away from God's commandments. We have a tendency, a human, 
fleshly tendency to wander away from the word, but hiding the word in your heart will make you seek it when you start to wonder. What does it say? I sought you. With my whole heart, I sought after you. I went looking for you. I tried to find the word because my heart tends to wander away from you. Hiding the word in your heart will make you seek it when your mind starts to wander. Do you see what I did there? Hide and seek. You'll catch that later on when you're having lunch with your family if you didn't catch it. The head takes in the word. But the heart keeps us focused on the word and keeps us focused on Christ. The heart helps us to filter through all of the noise going on in our heads. When you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, the Holy Spirit fills your heart and keeps your messy mind in check. That's the benefit of knowing a risen Savior of Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit guides you and moves you and compels your heart to seek after his word. The more of the word you can hide in your head, the more the heart can focus on it. But even though you may have the word hidden in your head, you may have the Holy Spirit in your heart that will not stop you from catching hell. <laughs> Watch this. Satan, he knows that word too. Matter of fact, Satan has had plenty of time and he can read and he's had plenty of time to study that word. He even knows the parts where the victory is the Lord's and not his, but he still thinks he can win. But the fact of the matter is that Satan still hates you and he wants to destroy you. So he will try to speak lies and have truths to derail you from what God says. He'll try, he'll make an attempt when you don't get in this word and you haven't committed it to your head and to your heart and you haven't used your whole heart, then Satan will try to fill in the spaces with half-truths and lies to confuse you. He is the author of confusion and he is the father of lies. That's what the devil does. That's how he attacks us. He knows that once you have the Holy Spirit, he can't take your soul, but he's going to give you so much suffering and pain that he's going to try to derail you from the blessings and the coverings of God. Don't believe me. Just go ask Job. The devil walks around to and fro on the earth. And God says, have you considered my servant Job? The devil says, I don't uh, the, I can't touch him because you have a hedge of protection around him. But when God lifts that hedge. And says Job is found blameless, that he won't betray, that he won't go against me, he won't deny me. The devil has permission at that point to attack Job. And if he'll attack Job, who is blameless in the eyes of the Lord, what makes you think he won't try to attack you in any way that he can? <clears throat> the devil knows that if you only hide part of the word in your head and in your heart, then he can try to fill in the blanks with his influence. That's why the Bible says in verse 10, I will seek after you with my whole heart. You need to decide what side of this thing you're going to be on. Yeah, I'm asking you for a commitment because God asked you to be committed. Seek after him with, his, with your whole heart because the Bible also says no man can serve two masters. The Bible also says that a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. The Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. You need to hide the word in your heart. Now, here comes your shout. When you hide the word in your head, you have the right instruction. When you hide the word in your heart, you have the right direction. But the word hidden in your heart will give way to the initiative of your hands. Verse 11, what does it say? Your word I have hidden in my heart that I might not, what, sin against you. The psalmist says, I have hidden the word in my heart so that my actions will not offend God. Now let's go, let's go back and let's look at this. We started off with hiding the word in your head. The brain stores the information. Then we move on to the heart. The heart gives purpose 
to that information, but the information comes to life through your hands. When you've got the word hidden in your heart, your hands will begin to operate in the will of God. When your hands are not operating in the will of God, there is a disconnect somewhere in your life between your head, between your heart, and between your hands. And here it is, the disconnect that you may have will start to show up in your actions, will start to, start to show up in your hands. The hands will lead you to, to pick up that bottle, not once, not twice, but several times. The hands will cause you to get angry and pick up that gun. Your hands will cause you to take some clothes in the store and not pay for them. Your, pan, your hands will cause you to get caught up in some scam trying to make a quick buck. Oh, wait a minute. Now, I haven't forgotten about the other body parts. Your eyes will lead you to start looking at a woman or a man that isn't your husband or your wife. Your, your tongue can lead you to say some things that you normally wouldn't say in church. Your fingers will cause you to post some things on social media that you might live to regret. And your feet can lead you to some places where you might spend some money that you really don't have. Your ears can draw your attention away from the presence of the Lord. Your flesh will always direct you towards sin, but the word will direct you back towards God. Now, you have to know that you know that you know that you want to be pleasing in his sight. You ought to tell somebody, I want to be pleasing in his sight. The word commands us not just to be do, not just to be hearers of his word, but to be doers of his word. What's manifested in your heart will come out through your hands and you will do something. You will be compelled to act on what your heart is telling you to do. You need to be about that action. You ought to tell somebody right now in the comments, I'm all about that action. You can hear the word, you can know the word, but can but can you have the you can have the word, but can you live the word, the word? Is it played out through your actions, through your hands, through what's happening in your heart? The psalmist implies that the only thing that keeps him from sin is the word of God hidden in his heart. And if you look at that and you invert that, turn it into a positive, the only thing that keeps him in the will of God is the word of God. So let me close with this. The word of God is a treasure to us. We must hold the word so precious and close to us and close to us and lean on it in times like these when we don't have all of the answers. We need the word of God. You should treasure what you have. If you don't have a Bible, then you need to get a Bible and open it. You need to grow in the word. You need to get the word more than just Sunday. You need to Find and seek out the Lord with your whole heart. In this treasure lies the answers to all of life's great challenges that we face. All of the truth that we've been seeking is in the manual. All of the story, the story of your life is written on every page of the book. Treat it like the treasure that it is. Because where your treasure is, your heart will be also when you commit to the word with your whole heart. It will always bring you closer to God. And when your heart is committed, your hands will follow his will. Let me let me take the time to just show you how how this works. See, when I think of Jesus, when I think of his goodness, but I have a word that's hidden in my head and I just think about the Lord and all that he's done for me. When I think about his promises, oh, all y'all that will help me today, that he will never leave me or forsake me. When I think of his promises, 
that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. When I just think about his promises that he'll keep me in perfect peace if I keep my mind stayed on him. When I think of the promise that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. When I think of the promise that all things are working together for my good, something on the inside starts moving. Something on the inside starts to shake. Something on the inside starts to shift. And I can't help but to use my voice and shout. I can't help but to stomp my feet. I can't help but to lift my hands and clap my hands and give him glory. Why? Because of the word. He has lifted his hands for me. The word says he lifted his hands for me. When did he lift his hands for me? He lifted his hands for me. On one Friday afternoon, he lifted his hands for me. On an old rugged cross, he lifted his hands for me. When they put nails in his hands, he lifted his hands for me. When they, when blood came streaming down, he lifted his hands for me. And then the life came out of those hands. But three days later, early on a Sunday morning, those same hands that lost life, they came back to life. And the Bible says that he rose again with all power in those same hands. That's why I can lift my hands to him because he lifted his hands for me. Oh, y'all not going to help me in here today. You ought to just hit that like button as fast as you can. Matter of fact, hit that love button as fast as you can because God gave his son, his only begotten son. He loved us so much that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. He lifted his hands for you. You ought to just love that right now. Love lifted him and kept him on that cross. Love ought to lift up your hands. Love ought to hit your fingers right now. The what's in your heart might come out through your fingertips, through your hands, through your mind, through your mouth right now. You ought to just give God glory. Can we give God glory right now? Can we just lift our hands wherever you might be and just shout unto the Lord because he's worthy to be praised. Oh, y'all not going to help me. So you ought to lift your hands right now in worship. You ought to lift your hands in praise. You ought to lift your hands in adoration. You ought to lift your hands in exaltation. Y'all help me, help me, help me, help me. You ought to lift your hands in adoration and admiration. How many people can just give God your hands right now? You ought to give it all to him because he's worthy to be praised. He's worthy. Oh, he's worthy to be praised. Commit the word to your head. Commit the word to your head and then commit the word to your heart. And when you commit the word to your heart, the word will show up and it will un unravel and will reveal itself through your hands. Sometimes you're not going to have a Bible. Handy, but you need to hide the word, have the word hidden in your heart. Right now, if you don't have a relationship, or you just don't know, if you have a relationship, if you don't know where to start, if you look at the Bible and it just just reads like a foreign language. If you look at the Bible and you say it's been written over 2,000 years ago, how is it still relevant? Right now, the Holy Spirit, I'm inviting you right now to believe in Jesus Christ. The first step towards all of this. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Is to believe in Jesus Christ, that he died on the cross for your sins, that he rose again from the dead, if you believe that and confess it with your mouth, the Bible says that you shall be saved. Right now, if you believe that, just let us know. Send us a comment. Send us a message on Facebook. Just let us know that you believe that. And we'll show you where to get started in this word to help you walk in the way that God would have you to walk. And right now, we know that we are not assembling together in person. But right now, this word is extended to you. And this invitation is extended to you, no matter where you are, to become a part of a church family, 
to get involved with other believers so that you might grow and we might all grow together to proclaim to a dying world that Jesus Christ still sits on the throne, that he is our Lord and Savior. So right now, if, you need a, if you're in need of a church home and you don't have a place to call your own, right now you can be a part of Mount Gilead Baptist Church. Just send us a comment or give us a, a message on our Facebook page and I'll extend you the right hand of fellowship. I joke this week, I'm not giving right hands of fellowship, I'm going to give you the right, the right fist bump of fellowship. But the point of all that is, uh, forget the formalities, you need a pastor and you need a group of believers to grow with. Join us right now and you can become a part of this congregation. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we come to you right now thanking you for the word that you've given us, Lord. Lord, it is a treasure for us to be whole. Lord, if, if we just take the time to read through your word, God, we'll find the richest text about you, about your character, about your love, and about us and our relationship that we could ever find. Lord, slow us down sometimes, Lord. Help us not to get so ahead of ourselves that we put other things in front of you, Lord. Lord, you said in your word for us to study, to show ourselves approved. Lord, approve each and every person right now, Lord, so that they might know what's in your word, God, so they might grow according to your will, so it might show in their hands and everything that they do, Lord, that every word that they speak, every, every gesture that they make, every step that they take, God, someone might look at them and say, that is a light that is shining in a dark place. Lord, help us to be light. Help us to be salt. Help us to make a difference in this world and direct people back towards you, Lord. Hide the word in our heads and our hearts and in our hands. Lord, forgive us for all of our sins and everything that we've done to offend you, Lord. Help us to get back on the right path with you and renew the right spirit within us. Help us, Lord, not to be conformed, but to be transformed by the renewing of our minds that we might be pleasing in your sight. Lord, bless this church. Thank you, Lord, for all that you've done. Thank you for being a mighty good shelter. Thank you, God, for being a mighty good keeper. God, keep us all safe from all hurt, harm, and danger. God, keep us healthy throughout this pandemic. God, keep our minds stayed on you and in perfect peace as we struggle sometimes to make some of these difficult decisions, Lord, help us, be with us, guide us, and protect us. It's our prayer in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Listen, right now, uh, it's time for us to give. Let's not forget to give on today. We have so many different platforms. You can give on Tidely, Givelify. You can give on Cash App. You can give on Venmo. We have all of these uh, different platforms, and if you still wanna just mail it into us, mail it to our secure location, at 600 Grove Street in downtown Fort Worth, Texas, and we will make sure that what you give goes back into Kingdom Building. We thank each and every person, and we thank God for blessing us with such with your gifts and with what you've given, because it's truly gone back into blessing others and to sharing and spreading this word of God in spite of our circumstances. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. We thank you as a, as a church from the bottom of our hearts for all those visitors. If this is your first time coming to our page, be sure to like our page. Be sure to share. Uh, be sure to follow us so that you get updates every time we post something on Facebook, on Instagram, and on YouTube as well. Amen. God bless you all. I wish that, I hope that you all have a blessed week. Don't forget, Wednesday night, 7 o'clock, we start a brand new series, Finding the Right Fear and getting back into the right fear, uh, and getting back into the right frame of mind when it comes to our fear. We're going to deal with some things on a very deep and profound level that you may not have heard before, dealing with your fear. So I encourage everybody to hide this word in your heart. Get involved with a systematic study of the word of God so that you can hide some of this word in your heart so you know what to do when you don't have it. Amen. Amen. God bless you. I wish you all well. I'll see you all in prayer on tomorrow at 7 o'clock, and I'll see you all Wednesday at 7 o'clock for our Hour of Power Bible study. God bless you and God keep you. I love you all, and there is nothing you can do about it. God bless you. Be at peace.